Hey everyone, it's John from Ride Upstate. It's Saturday, and so that means it's time for Gig Tube Weekly. And this is only about the third or fourth time I've tried to record this. I tried to record it in advance, but uh, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. I kept having troubles. We'll just leave it at that. All right, so let's dig into some news. The first piece of news that I have, which you might think, what does this have to do with gig work and rideshare, is this company called, uh, what's it called? Whisper Aero that is working on flying taxis that aren't as loud. So first of all, flying taxis, where's mine? I mean, imagine the novelty of something like that and what you could charge. <laughs> Second, this brings up a good point because we have seen that Amazon and other companies are looking to use drones to do delivery because one of the riskiest and expensive portions of the whole delivery market is us, right? So what significance does this a flying taxi? So what? Well, there are a lot of niche opportunities out there. We recently just saw Richard Branson go into space. Space tourism is starting up. People are willing to spend more money for novelties. So at some point, who knows, there could be a company that may come around and do flying taxi rideshare. I mean, heck, Uber tried to do helicopter rides in New York City, but that didn't pan out so well. Also, as a Gen Xer, I want to know, where's my flying car? We're supposed to have flying cars by now. Instead, what we're getting are these electric cars that, well, it's debatable on uh, what their impact on the environment is going to be in 20 or 30 years. But we shall see, right? So I was posting something on TikTok the other day. I'm not a big TikTok user. I just, it's not a platform for me. But I know that a lot of people coming into my town right now for the horse racing season probably are TikTok users. And so I posted a little kind of an informational video. You know what? Let me just play it. Are you in town for the Saratoga track season? Uber and Lyft drivers are looking forward to taking you safely to and from the race course. But there's a few things you need to know. Number one, masks are still required in the vehicles because Uber and Lyft are following the CDC guidelines for mass transportation. Number two, passengers are not allowed in the front seat. So make sure you order a ride appropriate for the number of people that are going to and from the track. And number three, you're probably going to wait a little bit longer and pay a little bit more because not as many drivers are on the roads right now as there used to be. We're looking forward to taking you all around town and hearing all your stories about uh, your time at the track. So we just want to say we're going to get you there safely. We're going to get you back safely. And uh, we just hope that you'll follow these uh, few guidelines and uh, help us to get you where you want to go. So I posted that video and one of the things that I was seeing is these advertisements for DoorDash and what they included. It was very fun. Each one of them, I think I saw four or five of them as I was kind of just scrolling through. Like I said, I don't really use TikTok and these ads for DoorDash would come up and they would always show an attractive young woman talking about how much money she's making on DoorDash, like $20 an hour or something like that. And I thought to myself, man, DoorDash is going hard on this on TikTok. They're really looking for more drivers. I think the estimate right now is that they have about 2 million drivers in the United States. That's a lot of drivers. But if you recall, when their earnings report came out, they reported that the vast majority of the drivers are on the platform for only about 10 hours. And so they want to get more people on doing a ride, here, a delivery here, a delivery there. That's really ideal for them. If they can get three to four million people on DoorDash and doing five to six hours of work a week, that's that's golden for them. They can continue to kind of maintain this idea that we're independent contractors when we're not. Should we be independent contractors? Absolutely. But based on 
I guess there's two ways to look at this. I know I'm going off on a tangent here. I guess there's two ways to look at this. Either we there needs to be a new classification or DoorDash needs to follow the rules for independent contractors and give us all the information up front. And that's true of all these gig companies. We either, there either needs to be a, a new classification besides an independent contractor or a W-2 worker. So like this hybrid worker, I guess hybrid contractor or they need to follow the rules for independent contractors so you've probably seen all of the news about ride share prices and how prices are going up that's related to that video that i that i put on tiktok that i that i showed you you know um i'm seeing it here i'm seeing double digit surge and that's good because the earnings are there but it's also going to lead to you know, if I'm getting a $12 bonus, for example, on a trip, I can't imagine how much the passenger's paying. So they're probably not going to tip. And some people's philosophy might be, well, if I'm getting $12, 12 more dollars to take someone two miles down the road, as opposed to, you know, the minimum fare in my area, what is it like $3.90 on Lyft or, and $3.60 on Uber, then I'll take it, right? It's going to lead to frustration, though. And we already have the deal where Uber and Lyft are following CDC guidelines when it comes to masks, which leads to another level of frustration. And I'm just afraid that all of these things stacked on top of them are just going to cause a powder keg here when we get as we're going through the middle of the summer. People are traveling more, they're getting out more, and it's just getting... You can feel the frustration. People were glad that they finally got to go out and do something, but then they're being told that they have to wear a mask in Uber and Lyft. And I mean, I'm of the opinion, if it's if it's my car, my rules, right? If I don't want anyone in my car without a mask on, then that's the way that it goes. So why can't these technology companies find a way? And this has got to be easy to do, right? Because they're pairing people up who are willing to take people's pets. So why can't they just put in the app, right? The driver says, I want passengers to wear masks and I want them to be vaccinated. Uh, you know, I want passengers to wear a mask or be vaccinated. And then on the rider side, they indicate, hey, mask, I'm vaccinated and pair those people up. Right. If I'm OK, for example, with people being in my car unmasked, if they're vaccinated, then pair me up with those people who are OK riding in a car with a driver who's unmasked and vaccinated. And I think what I'm finding right now, I've done about 50 rideshare rides in the past week. And what I'm finding is that a lot of people they, they either forget their mask or they don't want to wear the mask or they get in the car immediately without wearing a mask and saying I'm vaccinated or they get in wearing a mask and saying I'm vaccinated. It's getting a little bit uh, frustrating. And so it's tough now as a driver and we're the ones who have to enforce Uber's rules, not Uber themselves right? Oh, they have to take a picture before they uh, get in, you know, get their ride. Come on. We know how that goes. So I think Uber needs to do more to pair riders up with the riders and drivers with people who have a certain vaccination status or are willing and not willing to wear masks. I will make a note, though. I have found that the people who are most compliant with the masks are either number one people who use uber regularly or um, people in marginalized communities so sfgate is reporting that lyft is going to be starting their shared rides again i think in uber we call it uber pool right and we don't have that around here where i am but this is interesting because my it, the article here doesn't talk about why they want to do it but what i suspect is one of the things that is leading to the wait times being so high and the prices being so high is the fact that there aren't enough drivers out there hello we know that and one of the ways to minimize that is if the rider is willing to ride with someone else 
then people who have Uber pool or shared lift rides turned on can take two or three different passengers from one place to another. That would reduce wait times. It would reduce the extra costs. And um, I mean, that seems like a reasonable solution. So we'll see where that goes from here and what, what becomes of it. Just a reminder that all of the things that I'm mentioning, there will be links in the description below, except for like the ride share prices. You can just Google it, right? It's not that hard. It's probably showing up in your newsfeed pretty regularly. And of course the DoorDash ads, because I can't, I can't link to a DoorDash ad on TikTok. Atlanta rideshare driver was carjacked recently. And here's what's interesting about this is that apparently it was in a more well-to-do neighborhood. And so what I found interesting about this is normally where these carjackings take place are in neighborhoods where you would expect them to take place. And so what is happening here and what I think is happening is someone's getting a ride out to a nice neighborhood and they're calling for a comfort or a lux out in one of these nice neighborhoods where you would expect to get a ride like that and they jack you. They take your car. Fortunately, this particular driver was not injured. There was a gun involved and uh, it sounds like the guy's okay, except for the fact that, you know, his car was stolen. So folks, keep your head on a swivel. You never know what's going to happen. Um, yeah, you know, just be careful, folks. It's, it's dangerous out there in some neighborhoods. And apparently now it's dangerous in neighborhoods that normally wouldn't be dangerous. So the company Alfie is installing tablets in rideshare cars. They're doing it in, um, was it Miami Beach, I think? Yeah, they're doing it in Miami. And uh, basically what it is, is this company will come along and they will put a free tablet in your car. Now, what I haven't seen is kind of like what the requirements are, what kind of car, how often do you drive, and things like that. But it's a tablet that goes in and it's really, you know, it's an advertising venue and there's profit sharing. So if ads run in your car or someone purchases a service or something like that through the tablet, the writer gets um, part of the money for that just for keeping the tablet in their car. And I mean, they don't, the driver doesn't have to pay. I think I just said the writer gets part of it. It's the driver. The driver gets, you know, profit sharing. We saw kind of gimmicky things like this in the past where they were candy boxes. There was a company that was doing candy boxes or something two or three years ago and or goodie boxes and things like that. And you could share in the profits of whatever was sold. Um, I think, you know, you're getting a free tablet. And if you're a full-time rideshare driver, having something like this in a nicer vehicle is probably a good way to do this, especially if you're in a place where there's a lot of tourists advertising dollars are going to be there. There are going to be people looking for things to do and things to buy if they're on vacation. And so, yeah, I mean, it sounds like a good idea. And if I were a full-time driver, and I think if I had a mid-sized car or something like that, where I knew I could get more higher-end rides, the comfort rides and things like that, or if I drove XL or Lux or Black or something like that, this is definitely something that I would do. That's it for this week. I don't have a gig worker of the week. No one's been getting in touch with me. So if you want to be the gig worker of the week, here's what I need from you. Get in touch with me through Instagram or Twitter. And basically what you can do is if you follow me, I will follow you back and you can message me and I will uh, just ask some information of you and we'll, we'll put it up here. Basically what I want is a screenshot of your uh, driver profile if you're willing to share that I you know if there's information you want if you want your picture blocked out that's fine if you want your real name blocked out that's fine I can do that as well uh, but I just want to kind of say hey you know check out this ride share person check out this food delivery person and it's not about whether or not you're you have a YouTube channel if you're just a driver that watches if you're a gig worker that watches this channel I want to share about gig workers uh, every week, a new one. So uh, it's right down there. 
Ride Up State. It's on Instagram and Twitter both. You can get in touch with me. And let's do it. I want to get some more people out there. That's it for this week. My name is John from Ride Up State, reminding you that just because you're in a small market doesn't mean you need to settle for small profits. Bye.